Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new Umbro Medusa Pro. Now, as you guys can see, I have a pretty unique box in front of me. Umbro was nice enough to send out a press kit. So just keep in mind that this is not the box that the shoes will come in should you buy them from a store. This is, like I said, special for media, I suppose. So the box itself has the shoes, it has all kinds of cool little patterns on there, and the kind of catchphrase or main advertising kind of point that they're making with this shoe is Magic Touch Lightning Speed, which I'll explain in just a second. So the box is really unique in that it's a bit of a magic trick. So on the one side, you can see it says, now you see me, um, and then it has this little strap here. So this is technically where you're supposed to open the box. So hold the box in place, pull it open, and on the inside you'll notice the box is completely empty. And you can see it says, now you don't, introducing Medusa by Umbro. And then it's got this little kind of playing card. Um, again, it says Medusa right there on the back. Hopefully this will focus. There it goes, and then on the one side, on the other side, it obviously looks like a king, which is kind of cool. And then basically it's just a flip out kind of USB dongle. It has some information about the shoe, which of course we'll go over in this video. So box, as you guys can see, has no shoes in it. But then when you close it up, the other side pops out and there are the shoes. So really interesting. Not sure how they, they're able to do this. It's like a box in a box type thing, but really, really cool trick. I've never seen this done before, uh, but there are the shoes as you guys can see. So. We'll get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the brand new Umbro Medusa Pro, um, which is a very, very kind of interesting boot, kind of just a leather upper variation of the new Umbro Velocita Pro. You can see it does share the same uh, sole plate and stud pattern. Uh, but like I said, in today's video, we're going to go over all of the details in regards to tech specs, the way these things fit and feel on feet, the weight, given that this is supposed to be a lightweight kangaroo leather offering, as well as just a general kind of overview of the aesthetics on this shoe. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, you can check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find Buy It Now links where you can pick up the new Umbro Medusa for about $200 US. As of right now, it is only available out of the UK. Not sure if that will change in the near future. Again, if you're interested in the pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, I wanna explain the name really quickly because it is a little bit confusing. As you guys can see, it is written there on the shoe, M-E-D-U-S-A-E, -E, which you might think is pronounced Medusa. I actually contacted Umbro directly after receiving the shoes, asking them how you actually say it. And you do in fact say it Medusa. The E is simply there to make the logo look a little bit cooler. It really has nothing to do with the pronunciation. So uh, for those that might be a little bit confused on how to say this, it is in fact the Umbro Medusa, not Medusa or whatever other way I guess you could say it if you were actually pronouncing the E as well. So tech specs wise, this is nothing too crazy in terms of what we've seen before from other brands. It's kind of an all new thing for Umbro and the general quality of the shoe is actually really, really good. So uh, the upper is a combination of kangaroo leather, which is really, really nice. That we, that's what you see here at the front with the stitching pattern in this very bright, almost kind of like pinkish orange color, really, really cool looking. Um, and then of course the rest of the shoe, which is in this darker blue color, is a combination of performance mesh along with Umbro's signature A-frame cradle on both the lateral and medial side. So starting off at the front of the shoe from this seam forward all the way through the toe box and forefoot area, and then cutting off a little bit further back through the midfoot, you have a kangaroo leather vamp. And as you would expect from Umbro with their top end models, the quality of the leather is actually really, really good. You also do have some leather running up the sides of where the laces are positioned, um, which doesn't really add to the leather-like feel in this area of the shoe. It's there mostly for aesthetics, I believe. Uh, but like I said, the leather you get here is in this bright orange color. And the quality is, like I said, pretty good. It's not too thick, it's not too thin. It's very soft from right out of the box, um, which reminds me a lot of, honestly, uh, older F50 Adi Zero models in the leather upper variation, which were very, very popular going back to 
I guess 2012 is at the peak of their popularity. A lot of people like them. Is this a shoe that you should buy if you're looking for that classic leather feel? No, because the majority of the upper is still a very, very thin synthetic material. But if you want kind of a combination of soft leather at the front, which makes for a nice comfortable fit and a nice soft touch on the ball at the front part of the shoe, but at the same time you want a more lockdown feel and just a thinner feel through the midfoot in general, not to mention a very lightweight construction, this definitely has what you're looking for. I guess I would compare it to anything um, on the market right now. It would be uh, probably the Mizuno Morelia Neo, um, which is not the most popular shoe, but that's mainly because it's Mizuno and not another brand. Uh, but nonetheless, the quality of the leather is good. There just isn't all that much of it. So the rest of the upper that you see in navy blue here is uh, their performance mesh material which is a thin layer of mesh that as you guys can see is kind of translucent. You can see the A-frame cradle behind it. You have a layer of fused material on top, a layer of fused material underneath, and then you also have a liner on the inside. So there are several layers to what is still a very thin material and also material that is quite flexible. It doesn't have an overly plasticky feel, um, which is generally the concern when you go with a super thin synthetic, but this actually feels pretty good um, on your foot. Uh, when you put them on and then you do have the a-frame cradle as well so that cradle is this kind of uh, neon yellow uh, color that you see on both sides and essentially it is a fused on band in the shape of an a minus the, the middle part um, that runs from the base of the sole into this second to last lace hole here and then runs back to the heel area so this is kind of a lockdown feature a structure feature so when you do pull the laces tight it's grabbing the midfoot locking it in place in a comfortable way there's not really any significant amount of pressure in this particular area of the foot um, and again you're getting that extra stability despite the material itself being on the thinner side, which is gonna save you a little bit of weight, um, which is kind of the main reason for this particular design. The laces run through the middle, as you guys can see. The tongue itself is made from a padded mesh material. Um, so you can see that you do have the mesh material, um, that same kind of mesh you see at the base on the sides, right here on the tongue without any kind of covering. Then it is backed with a memory foam insert on the underside. You have a little bit of this soft synthetic suede at the top, which is really nice, just because it moves nicely with this top part of your foot. It's not gonna chafe or anything like that. Just a nice, comfortable little feature um, that I really, really like. Again, the laces run right through the middle of the shoe, which is pretty standard for this style of boot. Uh, you can see that the cut in the heel is not super low cut. It's also not super narrow. It has a pretty standard fit in the heel, which I really, really like. That's one of my personal complaints with older F50 Adi Zero models, and even the current Mizuno Morelia Neo. I just don't love the super narrow, super tight kind of low cut in the heel. It just never seems to fit or I guess feel as comfortable as it could be, and you don't necessarily get that sensation with this particular shoe. It's got a little bit of a deeper fit, um, and they feel very, very secure and comfortable out of the box. Inside the shoe, you will find a heel liner made from a perforated synthetic leather material with a decent amount of padding considering how light these things actually are. So again, the comfort in the heel area is above average for this style of shoe, I would say. Insole, fully removable, pretty straightforward. It's got a uh, kind of liner on top that's just a smooth kind of fabric material. And then it's just got perforations throughout, single layer of foam, um, relatively lightweight, but it does have some good thickness to it. So step in comfort, not an issue here whatsoever. And then the bottom of the shoe, which does include a one piece heel counter as well, is of course their speed outsole, which is taken directly from the Velocita 2 Pro or the original Velocita hasn't changed for those two models. Um, and this is what gives the shoe ultimately its very lightweight feel. It's again, very similar to the sprint frame that we have seen from Adidas in the past. Um, but a little bit thicker and I would argue a little bit more flexible in the forefoot. I really like how this feels. Again, if you really miss those old um, F50 models, the Velocita Pro um, or even this new Medusa model are definitely worth a look because it does share a lot of similarities to those older Adidas shoes. Uh, and then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, again, similar layout to what we've seen from Adidas just with kind of some more uniquely shaped studs. So the studs themselves are kind of this four-sided shape. I don't even know what you would actually call that. Um, and you have that in the heel as well as along the lateral side of the forefoot. Whereas on the medial side of the forefoot, you're gonna find these conical kind of Pac-Man cutout shaped studs. Uh, so you get kind of a good combination of bladed and conical studs within the same stud pattern. Provides really nice traction on firm natural grass plane surfaces. Plenty of bite, but because the studs are conical on the medial side, you still have that freedom to kind of twist and pivot when you're up on your toes, which is a really nice feature as well. So traction wise, it works really well. The sole plate is nice and flexible. It has that lightweight feel. They are definitely quite comfortable with the leather at the front. But again, I stress this, if you really want that classic leather feel, 
this isn't what you're gonna look at. You're gonna look at something like a Tiempo Legend or even some of the uh, more traditional shoes from Umbro with a full leather upper. This is for somebody who wants more of a hybrid feel of a really thin shoe with still some of the softness and comfort that you would expect from a kangaroo leather shoe as well, kind of all built into one. It's, it's a hybrid of kind of modern and classic to a certain extent. And again, a lot of people really liked this style of shoe several years ago um, with the older Adidas models and currently with the Mizuno Morelia Neo. So if you're one of those people, there definitely is something interesting here in the form of the Umbro Medusa Pro. As far as weight is concerned, I thought we'd compare the Medusa Pro to the Mizuno Morelia Neo just because they are fairly similar shoes in terms of what they have on offer. So I'm going to weigh both shoes for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind these are both in brand new condition and both the exact same size 9 US. So this is a very fair comparison. We'll start off with the Morelia Neo, throw them on the scale, and you can see that they weigh in at 6.6 ounces, the equivalent of 187 grams, which is very, very light. So we'll change the scale back to ounces, pull these off, and we'll throw on the Medusa Pro, and you can see that they weigh in at 6.6 ounces, the equivalent of 188 grams. So technically one gram more than the Mizuno Morelia Neo, which essentially is nothing. You won't notice a weight difference with these shoes either in hand or on feet. So if you are trying to decide between the two, weight should absolutely not be the deciding factor. They're both nice and lightweight. And I guess if it means anything, while both of these shoes fit very differently from each other, the Morelia Neo is a much tighter shoe overall. I personally find the Medusa Pro significantly more comfortable, at least for me. Uh, it may be different for you, your preferences are gonna be different from mine, but for me, I prefer the overall comfort level of the Medusa Pro, despite these two shoes being very similar in terms of what they have on offer, and obviously very similar in weight as well. As far as aesthetics go, I think the Medusa Pro is a pretty good looking shoe. I mean, to a certain extent, it is typical Umbro with the double diamond logo smack dab in the middle there on the lateral side, white in color. Uh, but I think the overall design is pretty good looking. It's sleek, it's got some modern elements to it with the little pattern within the fuse here through the midfoot. I like that you can see the A-frame cradle underneath in a contrast kind of neon yellow color. The Medusa logo I think looks pretty cool on the shoe. You have the Umbro branding written out on the tongue as well as on the back heel tab here. Uh, and I think the combination of colors they have is pretty unique as well. Uh, the actual colors are officially called Fiery Coral. That's this kind of pinkish orange color you see here in the leather, the heel liner, as well as the majority of the sole plate. You're gonna find Deep Cobalt, which is this kind of navy blue color through the midfoot, the laces, the tongue, as well as the heel area of the sole plate. And then of course you have your sulfur color, which is this um, neon yellow they see in the Medusa logo, the A-frame cradle, as well as the tips of the stud. You also have a little bit of reflective material in the form of these five stripes running down the back of the heel, which is a cool little element as well. And again, overall, the combination of colors is really nice. I think the general shape and look of the shoe is pretty good. And I, I don't have too much to criticize here. I think it's a pretty cool looking shoe. Let me know your opinions on it down below in the comment section. Do you like how these look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course, what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Medusa Pros on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock blue laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of neon yellow reflective SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. Find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, they are very, very comfortable from right out of the box. Uh, something that really concerned me about this shoe when I first saw them is that you do have that soft kangaroo leather at the front, which is great, but then you have a thinner synthetic through the midfoot, which generally because the front is so soft, it can make the midfoot just feel lower quality than the rest of the boot, but I don't get that sensation with these. They're very comfortable all the way through the entire foot. Obviously the front part is more padded and just softer in general, but the synthetic mesh material they use through the midfoot feels really, really good. You get a good, amount of structure from it when you pull the laces tight with that A-frame cradle, but it doesn't feel stiff in any way, which 
is a good thing. Plus, I really like the fit in the heel. You get that um, smooth synthetic leather liner with the perforations that feels really, really good. It's got a, a more standard cut as opposed to just a more narrow feel at the heel area. And again, it's comfortable out of the box with minimal break in time required. As far as width is concerned, it is a tighter fitting shoe, but it certainly isn't squeezing my foot in any way. They're gonna be suitable for most foot types. Uh, you will get stretch out of the leather, obviously in the forefoot and toe box area, while the midfoot area really isn't gonna stretch all that much. It's just not that type of synthetic. Uh, so for the most part, the way the shoe fits from out of the box is how it's gonna stay. Again, you'll get a little bit of stretch at the front of the shoe, uh, but again, overall, really, really comfortable shoes. I guess if you have really, really wide feet, maybe not the best option just because it is on a fairly narrow base but like i said the shoes themselves don't feel narrow by any means and will be suitable for most people as far as sizing is concerned i'm wearing my usual size 9 us here and the fit and length is absolutely perfect so if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself i would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit all right guys that is it for my first impressions of the new umbro medusa pro look out for more content on this shoe on my channel in the very near future in the meantime if you guys are looking for more info be sure to check out the review page on my website that'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video on that page you'll find high quality images of this exact pair that i took myself as well as buy it now links where you'll be able to pick this guy up below its normal 200 retail price so again if you're interested in the pair first link down below go ahead and check it out if you have any questions at all regarding the medusa pro leave them down below in the comments and i definitely will get an answer out to you if you enjoyed today's video found it helpful and informative be sure to support it with a like subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear you can find all my social media information linked in the description as well and other than that guys hope you enjoyed today's video and as always thanks for watching